basically you can see what's going on in real time. Um, instead of having to go out to, and, and pull your camera uh, or pull your SD card and bring it back home and see what's happened for the last week, you know, when you're getting ready to go out and hunt, you, you already have real time knowledge. You know, hey, this is this is the best time. This is when I need to go. The other part is for people like me that don't have a whole lot of time to get out in the woods as much as I'd like, I, I don't have to worry about going, leaving work and, and, and going to find, find time basically to check my trail camera. It's already coming to me instantly. Big Buck Registry's Deer Hunting Podcast, episode number 266, the cellular game camera. Kimber O'Dell, covert scouting cameras, Hunt Tech part six. Support for the Big Buck Registry and the Deer Hunt Podcast comes from Rackology. Everything you need in one bag. Now available at Rural King and Orsland Farm and Home storefronts. Or online at www.rackology.org. Hunters blend coffee. Defending hunting one cup at a time. Finally, there's a coffee that helps rather than hurts your freedom to hunt. Use the code BBR to receive 10% off your next Hunters Blend order. Polar Works Coolers and the Chill Zone. Specializing in the most durable, reliable thermal cups and coolers. Keep your drinks hot or cold in any element. Covert scouting cameras. Remote cameras for hunting, wildlife, and security. Morse's Sporting Goods. A full line of sporting goods without the sales tax. And Big Buck Merch. You can get cool, high-quality Big Buck t-shirts, long-sleeve t-shirts, and hoodies. And show support for this podcast by visiting www.bigbuckregistry.com forward slash M-E-R-C-H. Big Buck Registry is a virtual museum of hunting stories. We preserve a piece of Americana by interviewing and recording hunters about their hunts and experiences from across the country. And who knows, maybe we'll learn a thing or two along the way that'll help us take our hunt to the next level. This is Chancey Walters with Whitetail Adrenaline and Big Buck Runner. You're about to listen to my favorite podcast, The Big Buck Registry. Hey, this is Jeff Trainer from LiveFreeAndTrap.com. You're about to listen to my favorite podcast, The Big Buck Registry's Deer Hunting Podcast. Hey, this is Zach Sandow at Onyx Hunt, and you're listening to one of my personal favorite podcasts, The Big Buck Registry. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, fellow predators. My name is Jay. Thank you for tuning in to the Big Buck Registry's Deer Hunting Podcast. For Dusty Phillips and Jim Keller and the entire staff here at the Big Buck Registry, welcome to this week's show. There are a couple things I'd like you to do for us if you could. If you would, please check us out on iTunes. Subscribe and leave us a review. With your help, we're going to try and push this show up the iTunes charts. I know we have a lot of listeners out there and I need you to take some action. I need you to leave a review and subscribe to the show. If you do subscribe, that'll give you access and notification each and every week that a new show is released. You can also access this show in its entirety on YouTube, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, and as an Amazon Alexa skill. Go to Alexa and say, Alexa, enable Big Buck Registry. It's all right there for you to access on demand at your fingertips. Regarding the harness program, we have an ample supply of harnesses to give away from our volunteer donors. If you're in need of a full body harness, please send an email to j at bigbuckregistry.com. We continue our podcast mini-series of hunting technology on this episode with the cellular game camera. Long gone are the days of the film game camera. The standard game camera now is digital with an SD card. But now the cellular game camera is making strides in both quality and price point. Will this be the new standard soon? Time will tell as everybody starts to accept and use the latest technology. We thought we should explore the cellular game camera because everyone seems to want one but many don't know enough about them to jump in. So we grabbed our good friend Kimber O'Dell from Covert Scouting Cameras to break it all down for us. We'll get to our entire interview with Kimber O'Dell from Covert Scouting Cameras in just one moment. But before we do, let's hear from our friends at Rackology, Polarworks Coolers, and Jim Keller with the Deer News. I still can't believe that's all you're taking. I got everything I need all in one bag. 
Rackology Deer Supplement and Attractant, developed through years of intense scientific research, comes a product that puts it all in one bag. Superior Attractant, scientifically formulated vitamins and minerals, and all at a much better price. To get yours today, please check out Rackology.org for a list of dealers. Rackology, how can you afford not to use it? Everything deer need, all in one bag. I always wanted one of those high-end coolers because of the quality that I had heard of, but I couldn't justify the price. Then I found Polar Works. Finally, I found a company that understands quality and affordability. The Polar Works lineup is extensive and is filled with Polar Cups, Polar Tubs, and Polar Soft Coolers. So check out PolarWorks.com when you're considering your next high-quality cooler without breaking the bank. That's www.polarworkz.com. For the Big Buck Registry, this is Jim Keller with the Deer News. Our first story this week, chronic wasting disease suspected in Marshall County, Mississippi deer. This story is from the WTVA.com website and was reported by Zach Carlisle. Another deer in Mississippi has tested positive for chronic wasting disease. The free-range, one-and-a-half-year-old male white-tailed deer was collected on November 23rd in Marshall County. This was from initial testing. A sample will be sent to the National Veterinary Services Laboratory in Iowa for an additional definitive test. This is the first animal to test positive for the disease in Marshall County. The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks is encouraging hunters to assist with CWD monitoring efforts by voluntarily submitting samples for tests. According to MDWFP, there is no evidence that CWD poses a risk for humans. However, it is recommended that people avoid contact with infected animals. The other cases were in Issaquana County and Pontotoc County. Ohio sees significant drop-off in gun deer harvest. This story is from the OutdoorNews.com website. Amid challenging weather, hunters in Ohio checked 60,557 white-tailed deer during the 2018 week-long deer gun season, according to the Ohio DNR. Last year, hunters checked 72,814 deer over the same period. Hunters can enjoy two more days of deer gun season on December 15th and December 16th, and muzzleloader season is January 5th through 8th, 2019. Ohio hunters also still have two months left of deer archery season, which remains open through Sunday, February 3rd, 2019. Find more information about deer hunting at wildohio.gov. In Iowa, sheriff's deputy busted for unlawful possession of whitetail antlers. This story is from the OutdoorNews.com website. A Greene County, Iowa Sheriff's Department deputy has been cited for the illegal possession of white-tailed deer antlers. On November 3rd, a DNR conservation officer received a call from a man who came upon a scene of a woman who had hit a deer on N Avenue between 185th and 190th Streets in Greene County. The man waited for a sheriff's deputy to arrive. Once the deputy arrived, the man asked the deputy about a salvage tag, but Greene County Sheriff's Deputy Kirk Hammer declined to issue him a tag. According to state code, a salvage tag should be first issued to the individuals involved in the accident, and if not interested, then to any bystanders at the scene. Later in the day, the same man drove past the scene and observed Hammer in uniform near the deer, removing the antlers with a saw. When DNR Conservation Officer Nathan Halpert questioned Hammer, he admitted to taking the antlers. Halpert met with Hammer at his home and seized the antlers. Halpert explained to Hammer that it is unlawful to keep the antlers without a deer tag or salvage permit, and with a salvage permit, the entire deer would need to be removed from the ditch, not just the antlers. On November 12th, a citation was issued to Hammer for unlawful possession of white-tailed deer antlers, Iowa Code Section 481A.38, for a fine totaling $195. Kentucky Man Bags Rare Deer with Decapitated Buckhead Entangled in Its Antlers. This story is from the Fox News website and was reported by Madeline Farber. As the saying goes, two heads are better than one, or in this hunter's case, two sets of antlers. A man in Ballard County, Kentucky, recently bagged a two-headed deer, the state's Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources announced on Thursday. The man, who the wildlife agency identified as Bob Long, took aim at a buck with quote-unquote big antlers off in the distance. After making a shot and killing the animal, Long approached it and made an astounding discovery. The buck was carrying around another set of antlers and part of a decomposing carcass, the agency explained. The deer, which was truly a rare harvest, state officials said, has garnered thousands of reactions on the social media platforms, many users responding in both awe and disgust. While it's not clear how the buck in Kentucky became entangled with the carcass antlers, this occurrence, while unusual, is not unheard of. In 2014, a buck in Kansas was reportedly found with its antlers entangled with those of its rival. And in January, a North Dakota man shared photos with the Duluth News Tribune of a buck in a similar situation. 
That concludes this week's edition of the Big Buck Registry Deer News. For links to the stories featured this week, please check our show notes at www.bigbuckregistry.com. If you have any ideas for future topics or have any questions about any of these topics, please email me at jim at bigbuckregistry.com. For the Big Buck Registry, this is Jim Keller with the Deer News. Well, thanks to Jim Keller for the Deer News. Without further ado, here is Kimber Odell from Covert Scouting Cameras. Kimber Odell, welcome to the Big Buck Registry's Deer Hunting Podcast. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's winter time. And That's true. It's it's late season deer hunting, pretty much across the country. It's one of my favorite times of year to hunt, though, because I feel like the the, the deer kind of calm down a little bit. There aren't as many deer hunters in the woods, and the the deer kind of start uh, dropping their guard a little bit. I don't know if you you feel that in Kentucky. I certainly feel that in New Hampshire. I, th- I think so because um, gun season just ended here, so now it's back to um, um, just us bow hunters, really. So there's not near as many people in the woods, and the kind of calm- the deer kind of calm down a little bit. You're starting to hit your um, food sources again, so I- I'll have to agree with you on that one. Nice, excellent, so Kimber. You've been a-, a friend of the Big Buck Registry for years now, and Covert, of course, is a sponsor of the show. And I wanted to dive deep into the, the the covert wireless and, and, and in general the wireless technology that people are now starting to use for game cameras and i've discussed a little bit of it with on like uh, with an interview with qdma and we we realized that it's it's becoming more uh, uh, more people are aware of it more hunters are aware of it across the country States are are aware of it because they have regulations relative to using cellular game cameras in some states. For example, the state I live in says that you can use them. However, you can't use them if or you can't shoot the deer if it was caught on camera within a 24 hour period. It's kind of a silly, silly law, but there's some strange stuff out there and I want to cover some of that stuff. But most importantly, I want to dive deep on the cell camera uh, itself because I'm finding that there are a lot of people that still want one, but they're a little hesitant because they don't know a lot about it. So I think it would be a good idea if we went really deep into how all this stuff works, the bells and whistles, and, and just the billing plans and all that stuff that people are asking about. Absolutely. We still get those calls every day of asking more questions on actually how it works. Tell everybody who you are and how you're connected to Covert Scouting Cameras. Um, I, my name is Kimber Odell, and I am from Lewisburg, Kentucky. I basically got into Covert Cameras as soon as I graduated college. Uh, Joey, the ball, my boss, the owner of yep. Covert, um, he, I, I was basically raised down the road from him, and he, it was something he has just started and um, I, as I got out of college. I was actually working in tobacco. I'm um, just trying to, you know, make a little little bit of a living until tobacco. I got a tobacco. Tobacco, yes, sir. I like it. And to uh, until I could find a basically a career or a job to, you know, get into. Yep. And Joey had, he called and was like, "Hey, I'm needing some help. I've started this. Um, what do you think?" I'm like, "Well, I, I don't have anything to lose. I might as well start. I mean, I'm, I'm not doing anything else." So went in. And that's how I got started, basically. And here I am now. So. <laughs> What's your position at Covert? Um, my, my actual title is, is the national sales and marketing manager. Okay. All right. Which means you get to go to all the, the big shows and, and line up retail and talk to guys like us and, uh, d- deal with a lot of the, the, how you're going to sell these products right across the Absolutely. The, my, I do deal with the whole marketing side of it and, and everybody on the TV, the podcast, the, the, carbon tv stuff all of that side of it but the biggest part of my job is going to be sales so i i I do all the meetings with your not just your box stores but even your your mom and pop guys okay so that's that's my main job gotcha well i i've i've fallen in love with covert cameras they they're i think they're some of the best cameras on on the market and and i'm not just saying that because you're a sponsor i became familiar with and started using coverts before you guys were sponsors of the show um so it goes back to a a a genuine enjoyment of your product and all the way from the from the the entry-level camera up through your cell camera stuff I find it phenomenal across the board. It takes great pictures. It doesn't miss anything. And and I've done field tests with your competitors, putting the same camera or a camera on the same tree, and I've missed lots of shots with some other 
cameras that um, we won't mention today, but <laughs> but that Culver picked it up. So, well, good. I don't know why that happens. You probably have some insight as into the technology of how that works, but hands down, I, I just get better results with Culver. Well, good. That's that's obviously what we want to hear, and that's what we like to hear. But yeah, we we do get from time to time that our camera takes a lot more pictures, and sometimes it does pick up, especially if you know a. Uh, if something's moving in front of it, it's going to take a picture of it. And I'm like, yep. well, you know, that's, it's a good thing to an extent because you know, you're not missing anything else that actually walks by when you want to see it. Right. Right. Exactly. So let's talk about some of the evolution of the camera. When does covert get into this business? When does, when does it enter into the, the game camera industry? How does it decide it wants to get in? When does Joey decide, Hey, let's, this is a good idea. Um, he started back in 2008, I believe, is when he first first started getting into it. He was actually in the security side and setting up security cameras, security systems for people, and uh, somehow or another got his hands on a on a camera that worked off a of SD card. And he was like, "Man, this would be really good for for hunting," hmm. and that's kind of where it where it all started. Gotcha. And what were what were some of the early cameras that were out there i mean i i may have some i just don't know where the beginning of covert begins what what was the be- the first, first camera stuff? he had was called the um covert one and then we had the and then we went straight to the covert two covert assassin two and then after that that's when we started name having a, a little bit more into the name side of it versus just covert ones and covert twos and what year was that approximately covert ones would have had to been the later later 2008 early 2009 and then then 2000 mid 2009 late 2009 is when he came out with a covert too okay so you've you've progressed over the years and when does the cell camera kind of enter into the market maybe i don't know if you were the first into the cell camera market when it comes to we were not cameras, but, we okay. were the, we were the first to have a cell camera in on the market that was affordable Gotcha. Um, where they had the ten dollars a month for like a thousand pictures, or nineteen ninety nine a month for unlimited, and that was back in two thousand and eleven. Okay, and that was the Spec Ops. So that you're going, so that you're in the cell camera trail camera business, or cell cam trail camera business back in two thousand and eleven. Yes, sir. Wow, that I mean, that's seven years of this technology, and I feel like it's just getting going. Do you do you feel that way when you're when you're I dealing agree. with stuff? And, it has changed so much um, from the first first camera that we had that was cellular to now, and it's so much easier now, um, and it, it makes things a whole lot easier on us as a company and, and also our customer service reps on being able to, if, if a customer calls in with an issue, it's so much easier to take care of it now. Okay. What were some of the earliest issues that you, you felt were challenges back in 2011? The biggest thing was nobody really understood exactly what it was. So they had to, at that time, go to the AT&T store and, and buy a SIM card from AT&T and get okay. them to set it up. But the customer service at the AT&T stores, nobody under, knew what it was. And so having to explain how to get it set up, which we it wasn't dealing with our customer. We were having to deal with the customer service from AT&T. And that was probably the biggest challenge that we had up until probably 2014. Okay. So for those who aren't familiar with what a SIM card is or don't care, um, I'm one of those guys that don't really care, but it, I understand it's important for your technology to work. What What is a SIM card and, and how does it relate to cell ca- uh, cameras or cell phones, for instance? Basically, that's what connects you to their network, to the AT&T or the Verizon network. Everything they have to be able to connect to, from our device to their system is through that SIM card. Okay. And is the, the card itself, and I assume that's when I got my camera that I have today, and I have a Verizon um, camera, it came with what appeared to be a, a piece of paper that you can pop out. Is That's the SIM card that you're talking about that you then slide into the camera? <laughs> Um, it's not necessarily a piece of paper. It kind of looks like a credit card is when, yeah. when you get it. And yeah. it pops out, and it's a little small micro SIM is what it's called. It's a little plastic piece. It's got um, like a little metal connection on the back side of it, and it connects. Now, yes, that's what connects you to their network, but there's also stuff in the camera like the modules and such that also connect with that. It's a, it's a lot to it. Okay. 
So 2011, you get into it, you got some challenges with the providers themselves and how to get people connected to the network. From 2011 yes. to, let's say, 2016, what changes were you working on that, that made this stuff better? We didn't have Verizon at all until 2015. So that was a big um, a big one for us to, to pick up. So we, we went from only having AT&T and then having to go to AT&T to get the SIM card. 2015, um, we actually got had certified AT&T and certified Verizon modules, which is now a requirement from AT&T and Verizon. You cannot connect to their network unless you have a certified device. Okay. Um, so that was that was a challenge within itself there. And then and now every year, if we make changes or, or add new things, like now, back when we first started was 2G. Then it went to 3G, and now we're already 2LTE. So every time we make a different a change to these cameras or uh, even just come out with a brand new one, we have to go and recertify everything with AT&T and Verizon both. Okay, so that, that's interesting. Okay, so... I see on my phone, depending upon where I'm going, sometimes I'm in no service, which is frequent during deer season, um, to uh, 3G. I never see 2G anymore. Um, I don't see 4G, but I see LTE. What does all that stuff mean? So 2G is an older um, network that they have actually cut off. Um, Verizon and AT&T both have cut their 2G networks. Right now we're working on what back in 2013, 14, 15, and and 16 and even right now there's still 3g um so cameras are still working on 3g yes we have an lte model but 3g was a step up from 2g then you had your 4g which was like a 3g and a half and then they went to lte which stands for long-term evolution and it's just basically quicker speeds is what it is um and that's that's where we're at today so is that is that like better bandwidth for the end user so it's it's capable of of sending more data uh, over yes. a shorter amount of time. Gotcha. Right. Absolutely. So today we're dealing with LTE products. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's both, uh, that's for both your AT&T camera and your Verizon camera? Yes. Both, both cameras that we have for 2018 were LTE. Okay. All right. So between 2016 and 2018, what, what were some of the, the last pieces of this puzzle? And I feel like the cameras are are really good right now. Um, and you must feel that same way compared to where you started. I mean, these things are, Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, space shuttle compared to where they were originally. 18 for us was, is, is our first LTE product Okay. for for 18, for AT&T and Verizon. Um, which we had to, because Verizon and AT&T will eventually to shut down their 3g networks, just like they did the 2g. Really? Okay. And then with, with that, we come out with our app. So everything goes directly through. We they, we sell the SIM cards with the camera. Actually, basically, when you buy the camera, it comes with a SIM card. And then you go to our website. You choose the plan you want. And then everything is done right from our website. You never go to an at t You never go to a Verizon store. And then all the pictures come directly to the app via our covert wireless See, app. That, that's an important point right there because I, I get asked this question. And I think a lot of hunters still think that you have to go to your your plan and you have to mm-hmm. add it to your plan, but that's not the case anymore is what you're telling me. You have a whole separate system. How does, how does the, all that, that work? Um, basically it's, we're buying a big chunk of data from both Verizon and AT&T and we're reselling it to you guys basically. So you don't have to deal directly to them. If there's an issue, like you, for some reason it does not connect to the network. We can go in and, and see, okay, yeah, this is what's going on. It's not connected to AT&T or you've got the wrong SIM card number or you've got the wrong Something, something's messed up. And we can go in and, and look at all that ourselves without actually having to call AT&T and sit on the phone with their customer service for two hours or Verizon and, and get things fixed on our end. And that's the biggest help for us. Okay. So in the cell camera product line that you have today, if, I feel like they're continuations of some of your higher end cameras that probably go, go back to like the, the code black or the MP8 black, I should say, where you're, you're using the, the black flash. Mm-hmm. Do all your cameras have black flashes now? It seems like that's the case. And I think you might yes. have mentioned that when I, we saw 2018, each 2018, okay. we um, cut everything that was red glow, um, 
everything that we have is black flash. Now, we did not have a camera in 2018 that is a white flash camera, which is where you get your color nighttime pictures. But we do have a new one for 2019. Okay. So the cameras that you have today and, and the cell cameras that you have today are trail cameras. They're built to go outside for a long period of time. And it, it's for just, just for somebody that's never even seen a cell camera, it, it's a plastic box filled with some really good, amazing technology inside. It's, it's got a, an amazing game camera, but then it's also got the cell technology into it so that if this amazing technology that takes the, the picture of the big buck can be sent to a system that you have engineered that's proprietary, so that people can recover those images. And I want to get into kind of how all that works for both both models. And you have the Black Hawk LTE and the Code Black LTE. The Black Hawk, I believe, is the Verizon type. Yes. And the Code Black is the AT&T. Why do, you, why do you have to have two systems? Um, they just work off different networks. Okay. Um, one's CDMA and one's WCDMA. Okay. And... You pick these two for what reason? Are they are they just some of the more popular networks in the That's country? That's the two, yeah, the two largest networks in the country. Okay, so the I don't even know U.S. Cellular, I think, is some of the other ones, but those those are pale in comparison to the usership of the Verizon exactly. and AT and T and the coverage maps. I assume when you're looking at this stuff, you did you have to like get into coverage areas where it work because when you put these things out remotely. You, you're, you're absolutely yeah you know, i gotta get my my picture so how did you overcome that the biggest thing is it, there's pretty much yes when you get into the mountains and stuff yeah you, there's not as is not as good of cell service there but for the most part where where your majority of your hunters are hunting now there's cell phone signal um there might not be some down in in the in the valleys and and, and such but if you if you go up another hundred feet or something there there's usually cell phone phone signal and if they've got cell phone signal on their actual cell phone they usually like hey, i got at&t signal here that's the camera i'm gonna get okay now the black hawk which is the verizon has one mm-hmm. antenna and, the, and this is just the superficial outside look of these things the code black which is the at&t version has two antennas what why the two differences um Verizon did not require an incoming and outgoing on that particular model that we, we come out with on the, the module. Um, now, AT&T did. They required an incoming and an outgoing antenna for the module that we chose. So that was the only difference. Okay. So it's, it's really a requirement of the, the vendor, the provider, yes. the, cell co- the cell company that you have to work with. Yes. Okay. So when I buy a Blackhawk LTE, the Verizon model, in the package, you get the camera, all the instruction manuals. You get a, a one of the straps, one of the the classic covert straps to strap it to a tree. Um, what else am I expecting to come with this? I think you mentioned the SIM card. Is there anything else that I need to know that's in the packaging once I get it? Um, that's pretty much it. Um, you've got your um, quick start guides and your manuals and such. But other than that, you got your SIM card and your your antennas and your strap and that's it okay i open up the box and it comes in a plastic um, container so you have to get out your jackknife and cut around and open it up and pull out the 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 product itself and i'm looking at it and inside you open it up there's a one of those silica gel packs to keep everything dry on the inside Mm -hmm. um and you got you rip that out once you get into it, what's the next step to to getting this into a functioning environment? You, I assume, and I, I did this, but I want to walk people through it. How do you set these things up? What What's my next step? The first thing you should do is literally go to the website, which pull that quick start guide out. It has five or six steps on it. If you follow those instructions step by step, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. But basically, you'll go to the website Choose the plan you want, put your information in, and then on the camera, it comes with every camera is equipped with an IMEI number. And then on that SIM card, there is an ICCID number. You put both of those numbers in. Okay. Once you have that and hit activate, your camera should be ready to go. Okay. So I got to go to the covert wireless 
is it covert dash wireless? I think it is. Yeah, covert it's, dash the wireless. The billing side is actually secure.covert dash wireless. Okay. okay. So to get your billing account activated, you go to the secure. Say that again. Co- secure. Dot, secure dot covert dash wireless dot com. Okay. And once you have that established, and the, there are two numbers you have to pick up on that are, mm-hmm. are part of your package. One's, what was it, the I, ICC ID or something of that nature? Yes. The ICC ID number is on the SIM card and the IMEI number is on the camera itself. Okay. So there, there's, a, there's a number on the camera that you have to pull and there's a number on the SIM card that you have to plug yes. into the into the secure.covert-wireless.com. To That's activate, it. you plug in your billing information, name, address, all that standard stuff that you would do when you're trying to buy something. And what plans are available to pick from? There are several different plans: um, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. I would say the 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 most common plan that people are choosing is going to be the five thousand pictures a month, um, and that's both on Verizon and AT and T. I think Verizon is eleven ninety nine for a month for 5,000 pictures and AT&T is nine ninety nine a month where, but with that being said, if you've run, if you're running multiple cameras, um, you can share the plans. So say the first camera on AT&T is going to cost you nine ninety nine for 5,000 pictures. The second camera you add, it only costs you an extra $5 a month. Gotcha. And how do you decide which plan to go with? It's, and here's why I asked this. Like, I wasn't sure what I was needing. Uh, initially because I wasn't sure how many pictures I was going to get. And maybe this kind of goes back to like standard cell setup um, or not cell, but standard camera setup. If you're on a food plot, if you're on a food source versus a trail, do you have a, how do you decide how many pictures you should probably get? What have people who have tried these things reported so far? Um, When you're running on a food source, yes, you're going to, you're going to have more pictures than you are if you're running on a trail especially in, from what I'm finding out myself. Um, with that being said, most of these guys are putting a camera, a cell camera somewhere they've already ran a camera in the past. And so they kind of know what kind of traffic they're going to expect. But the other thing is you're not going to set the cell camera up like you would just a regular trail camera. You have, you have to think that the cam- this camera here that's using the wireless network, it's going to take a little bit more time to process everything versus just a standard trail camera. I normally put if if I'm going to put mine on on food or even a trail for that matter, I don't put anything less than a 30 second delay. So I'll, I'll have mine on a one shot burst every 30 seconds. And even on a food source, yeah, when I'm on a food source, I'm going to get a lot more pictures than I am if I'm just on the trail. And I think I'm run. I've got several cameras out, so I think I'm running the the. I'm going to say it's a 10,000 plan monthly plan. Okay. And the, the best thing about it is if you, if you reach your maximum limit, it tells you on the app, Hey, you've got 177 pictures left. Um, would you like to replenish? So basically what that does, it will never charge you an overage fee for getting more pictures. It will basically, if you don't replenish, it will shut your camera off as a no more sending pictures until it re- replenishes itself. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. So, and I have seen that where I've got so many, you know, I, I, I think I did a thousand and I've had to replenish because I had a thousand pictures taken and it asked me if I wanted to replenish. Of course I say yes. Right. Looking back, I prob now after I've tested this a while, I should probably upgrade my plan to something that's a, a more expensive per month, but gives me way more pictures. I probably would save a right. couple bucks. And you probably would. I think I think it's a um, seven ninety nine a month for a thousand pictures, and then nine ninety nine a month for five thousand. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's right. Right. So if I so it was it eleven ninety nine you said for five thousand pictures on Verizon, yes, sir. On Verizon, okay. So, and there's some other plans above that. Yes. You, yeah. There's several other plans. I know we have a, a yearly plan of a million pictures. Um, and wow. we actually have had a couple of people really choose that plan. Boy, wouldn't you like to know who those people are? Because <laughs> you know they're into it. You know they they know a lot of stuff. Um, exactly. So the in this the setup where you have okay, you get your camera. You look, you look through the the user setup guides. You go to secure dot covert dash wireless dot com. You set up your account. You plug in your credit card information. You pick your plan. 
you take the two numbers, one off the camera, one off the SIM card, you plug those in. How long does it take to activate? Um, on our website, it says uh, allow it up to 24 hours. Usually it's within 15 minutes. Okay. It, it just depends on how quickly it hits the network. That's it. Okay. I made a mistake when I did mine because I plugged in the wrong number. I was trying to read the number without my glasses on and I, I input the wrong digit and it didn't activate for the 24 hours that I was expecting. I was like, what did I do wrong? So I went back, put my glasses on and voila, I realized oh, I missed the digit. So that was a user error. So it seems like you do have to get the numbers right. Yes. That's absolutely. very you important. You do have to, if you don't get the numbers right, it, and, and the thing is, if you get the SIM card number right, the camera will activate. Right. But if you put the wrong IMEI number in, you're not going to receive any pictures to your app because it's with the app, it's, it uses both the ICC ID number and the IMEI number to be able to send the pictures okay. to you. Gotcha. So after I set up my account and the camera gets activated, what? how should I test it? Should I automatically run it out to a, a trail cam and I'm hanging on it, put the trail cam on a tree somewhere in the middle of nowhere and, and get it going? Or, or should I do some things local to home? Should I put it in the living room and see if the dog triggers it at night? What, what? Absolutely. Okay. Every time I set a camera up, I'm going to test it before I take it out. Um, just to make sure that I didn't put any numbers in wrong. I just want to make sure I'm going to send a test picture. Um, you have the option to send, you know, the, on the camera to be able to take a picture manually and then send it manually. And then we'll tell me send successfully and I'll pull up my app and there's my picture. So the first thing after, after you set up your account on the um, secure.covert-wireless website, you've got to download that app and you're going to use the same username and password that you just set up to log into that app as you did on the billing side. And then when I send a test picture, my picture's sent, and I take it out and I put it up where I want, where I want to put it for, for hunting. Okay. All right. So you've tested it, then you can put it into the field. Now, there's the, the the app itself. Now, the, the app is interesting because, and there's, you know, and I'm kind of just, my, my brain's buzzing because there's so many ways you can do this, right? You can you go to the app, and I'll let you walk, walk us through it, but you have the app, which is okay on phones you can the phone you have like an app you can download to your phone so you can like with anything the it, you can log into your 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 app and all the pictures that that camera pick or took and any other cameras based off of whatever you you have set up will arrive in your app you can go yes. you can go online and and retrieve those same pictures on your computer or your iPad or whatever, or, or any kind of large tablet device. It seems like, for whatever reason, you and, and thankfully, you thought this through, you can go to all kinds of devices to get the picture. Right. And here's the other thing, is that people ask me, well, can I get it on my phone? Well, you can get it on your phone. But it's, there's also, and you can break this all down for us, so you can get text versions of it, but and you can get emails. But that costs more, if I'm not mistaken. Can you pr- yes, talk about that stuff? Yes, it does cost you a little okay. extra. So how does that how does that work? So do you recommend just getting the app? Absolutely. Okay. Um, it's just like any other app that you add. If you allow the notification, the push notifications to come to you, um, which basically means if I get a picture, it's going to let me know, hey, you've got a new picture. If I allow that, then it's basically just like a text message. It 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 gives you a a tone, so it might ding, um, and say, hey, covert, whatever you named it. Covert One has sent you a new image, or you have four new images if you haven't looked at your phone in a while. Um, so, of course, your art, that's what you're paying for is for the camera to send the pictures to that app. Well, if you, we do still have people that want it to an email and want it to a text message. Well, that's fine, um, but it's going to cost you an extra three cents per message that's sent per phone number or per email. It seems like it'd get expensive very quickly. Okay. But I think the app's the way to go overall. Absolutely. Now, after you have your account set up, your billing account set up, you also have to go to covert-wireless.com and create an account there. Is that correct? You're going to create that account when you're setting the camera up. Okay. So, so this- basically when you go and add, when, when, when you first thing you do is go to that secure.covert-wireless website yep. and, you, and you add your information. Well, you're gonna, it's going to ask you for an email address. When you put your email address and your password that you choose there, you've set your account up. Okay. And then to make adjustments in either on in the app on your phone, whatever it is, 
Or if let's say, like right now I'm on my computer, I'm looking at my covert, the Blackhawk, the Verizon account. And inside of there, there are three tabs. There's the info tab, which tells me all about my camera, which it, it looks like that's how, like after I set up my my account through the secure site, the secure.covert-wireless.com, it's like that, that tab was created, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. And that puts in the MEID number, which I screwed up the first time but fixed it, and the ICCID, which are the two numbers you get off of the SIM card and off of the camera, which was put in through the, the secure system. So that tab's all set. That's all ready to go. But then there's this whole other module. This next tab is all about settings for the, the camera. And this is where I thought this was really cool, is that you can control the settings from the app. In the phone, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sends a message to your phone to say, start taking video now instead of pictures or change the photo size or all these settings that are available here. We can, I want to go through a bunch of these here in a minute. They're controllable from your phone or from your computer. You don't have to go to the camera at all. No, you don't. You can change anything you want to right there from that app. That's phenomenal. So I guess let's talk about the bigger picture. Why why do you need a cell camera? And we'll get into the, the settings in a second. Why do you need a cell game camera to begin with? What's the advantage? Basically, you can see what's going on in real time. Um, instead of having to go out to, and, and pull your camera uh, or pull your SD card and bring it back home and see what's happened for the last week, you know, when you're getting ready to go out and hunt, you, you already have real-time knowledge. You know, hey, this is, this is the best time. This is when I need to go. Um, the other part is, is for people like me that don't have a whole lot of time to get out in the woods as much as I'd like, um, I, I don't have to worry about going, leaving work and, and, and going to find, find time basically to check my trail camera. It's already coming to me instantly. Gotcha. Okay. I want to talk about the settings you can do, but just, just for example, I'm looking at a picture that came in from my cell cam just now. It gives me the date that the picture was taken and you have, it, when you activate the, the camera, when it turns on and it connects to the wireless network, like your phone does, it'll automatically find it, right? Once you're set up correctly with your, your numbers and you do your, your payment setup, it automatically finds a network. Like it knows it's supposed to be on the Verizon network. It's going to find it from that point yes. forward. It, it will download the date, and the time. You don't have to necessarily set that, but I think you can control it if you want to. If I'm not, is that correct? Right. Okay. So it's automatically going to set it like your phone would. Yes. It also gives you the latitude and longitude location of your phone, or excuse me, of your camera. So it actually knows where your camera is. That's amazing. It's right now it's on a basically from triangulation. So it's going to give you an idea, a close proximity of where it's at. It's not going to be exact. Okay. But it's, it's kind of neat that you, like, I mean, it's one of the concerns we always have. Somebody stole my game camera. Well, where is it? This can, yeah. this can triangulate and find it. Should they ever turn it on again? Yes. It can, can be pretty close. Any, any interesting stories to tell where people have had cell cameras attempted to be, stolen and they, they were able to re locate them again um we have several we always recommend to set your your um password on the camera and then all obviously once you get everything set up it's already connected to you so if somebody calls i'm like well i'm trying to get this added to my account but it's telling me it's already in use or i've got a password on my camera we'll make them send it in so we've we've recovered a few for sure really okay so it's almost got a security built into it in a way that Absolutely. the other cameras don't right i like that that's uh, the, to all the, the camera bandits out there, be warned. The, um, it also has a place for weather conditions. And for example, it tells me what the temperature was when the, the camera was taken. It also, as usual, tells me the, um, the, the battery life the, within the picture itself, how the picture was taken with a PIR trigger. And I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you can explain that in a second. The moon phase, uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. But it also inside, like it's, it, it must capture data because it's 
inputting it into another field where it says weather conditions, temperature 45 degrees, wind speed NA. So I don't know if that means it can't tell wind speed or if it, it just can't pull it in. I'm not sure. I wasn't sure. Maybe you can talk about some of the, the, the data that it's pulling in. Basically what it's pulling, it's coming from a, a, a widget. It's been in, import, in, or input into the, the app. Um, so it's pulling from the information that you've given us from putting your address and stuff like that. And then also probably from the GPS coordinates is it's pulling information from that, from another, another outside source. Okay. The, and then you were asking about the PIR sensor. Yeah, um, PIR sensor. Where it says PIR down at the bottom. Basically that means that something triggered it. Um, where we also have time lapse. So with, with time lapse, if, if it said time lapse down there at the bottom or, or just T or something to that extent, it would tell us that some, that the camera has been set to take a picture, whether something triggered, triggered or not. And, and that happens quite frequently um, when, especially for people that's not really familiar with trail cameras, they'll be like, well, I set it to one picture every five seconds. Well, you turn the time lapse on, you didn't turn it to where one something was triggering it. Um, so when they when they turn it to the time lapse on for one picture every five seconds, it's taking a picture every five seconds, regardless of something triggering the, the camera or not. Gotcha. Okay. So PIR just means that something triggered the its ability to sense movement. Absolutely. Okay. Let's take a little coffee break. And when we come back, we'll continue our conversation about the cellular game camera with Kimber O'Dell from Covert Scouting Cameras. I still can't believe that's all you're taking. I got everything I need all in one bag. Rackology Deer Supplement and Attractant, developed through years of intense scientific research, comes a product that puts it all in one bag. Superior Attractant, scientifically formulated vitamins and minerals, and all at a much better price. To get yours today, please check out Rackology.org for a list of dealers. Rackology, how can you afford not to use it? Everything deer need, all in one bag. Hunter-friendly coffee retailers are great, but ever wonder where they buy it from? Now there's a company that imports directly from farmers, zero middlemen, roasts it, and ships it right to your door. From the farmer's fields to your morning cup, Hunter's Blend Coffee has been in the hands of hunters. Through their giving, your coffee supports the RMEF, Whitetails Unlimited, and Women's Hunting Associations, and many others. Now you can defend hunting one cup at a time. Not bad for a cup of coffee. And did I mention, it is so good. And now back to our conversation with Kimber Odell from Covert Scouting Cameras about the cell camera. Then there's inside there, you can like it, share it, delete it, or request HQ. What do those buttons mean? Um, Like it is basically saying, I want to save this picture. Because right now it says, and if you if you read any of the stuff when you're setting your account up, that you'll save the, we'll save the pictures for up to 30 days. It's usually a little bit longer than that before we go through and delete all of them. Um, but if you like it, we won't delete it. Gotcha. Okay. So, you know, th- th- as I am, I, I don't always read the fine print. So this is, this <laughs> no, is, I don't think any of us do. <laughs> right. So this is good that we're talking about this because people listening will know that, Hey, if I, that's a picture I really want to keep, I, sh- I should grab it or, or like it. So you don't delete it. Um, right. share it. What does this do? You can share it through a text message, email, Facebook, um, I think that's the only three that's on there right now. Okay. looks like um, I just clicked on the share button. It says Facebook, Twitter. Okay. Uh, so, and probably Instagram as well. I think if you, if you've got those downloaded on your phone, you can probably up share it to any of those. Okay. Delete it. That's obvious. You can just delete the, delete it from your camera. And if I delete it, it, it won't, does, is it still saved on the SD card? That yes. is okay. All right. So just, and this is a very important point and correct me if I'm wrong, but if I delete it from the app where these pictures are stored, it's still being stored on the SD card that you still have to put in the cell camera. Yes. Now there is an overwrite function. If you have the overwrite function turned on and the SD card becomes full, it will start writing over your oldest pictures. Right. Okay. And I, I've seen overwrite on other cameras before. So if it gets full, it'll start rewriting the data on top yes. of it. But just because, so in other words, this delete button is connected to your account with covert where the pictures get sent to from the camera through the cell company. Yes. But it doesn't change the cell camera itself. Like, cause that still functions like a regular cell cam or a regular trail camera anyway, because you've got an SD card in there just like you would in any trail camera. Yes. Okay. Then uh, there's also this last button request HQ. What does that mean? 
Um, that means you can, um, it will, right now, the, everything that's sent is a um, compressed picture. Okay. Basically, to allow you to have, to be able to use the all thousand pictures per month or 5,000, whatever you choose. Um, but the larger the file, the less that number gets. So while having them compressed, that's how you we come up with the thousand pictures for the price of it that we offer, and then so on. But if you require, I mean, request an HQ picture, it costs you an extra of three cents, I believe, and it will download a higher res image of that picture you just received. Okay. Or you could go grab the SD card and pull it off of there as well. Right. Okay. So it's always high def, high quality on the SD card that's being picked up through a standard trail camera technology it's only when you're using the cell camera portion that it's it's compressed data so that to allow these affordable plans to be be distributed to your customers right okay one other button that i wanted to ask you about then we'll get into some settings is the real-time photo what is that and, and what does that mean what that means is if you hit the request real-time image, it means it will take a picture right then. But that also depends on what you have your remote control set on. If your remote control is set in real-time, which means it's open all the time, and when you press that, it should come in pretty pretty quickly. Um, but if you're wanting to save your battery life, you most likely don't have it running in real-time. Um, say a, most of mine are set to 24-hour delay because I, I don't really mess with my settings much. Okay. And it, and it basically gives me a lot better battery life. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into that a little deeper here in a sec. Let's go over to settings. You've got two modes, picture and video. That seems pretty obvious. You can set this to be, you can set it at the camera itself uh, before you put it, go out to the tree or while you're at the tree. You can actually do all these things manually, physically on the camera itself. You don't have to use the, the system that's built into the covert from a computer or app, but it's available through the, the app or your, your, on your phone or your computer. Right. Okay. So you picture video, very obvious photo size, three megapixels, five, eight, or 12 on this particular camera. 12 seems like more, I mean, it's bigger than your MP8 blacks, but this, so you can get some really high def or high resolution, I should say, through these these things. Can you talk about what three, five, eight, and twelve would do to a picture? Basically, honestly, for what's coming to your app, it really doesn't matter, and even coming to your phone, even to your computer. Okay. Um, unless you're going to blow that image up and and put it on a ten by ten wall, it really doesn't. Megapixels really doesn't matter. Um, it's all about the image processors and the actual CMOS sensor itself. Um, you can run your cameras on a five megapixel, even three megapixel, and it's going to take a great picture. Okay. And it's only once I go retrieve the, the higher quality from the SD card, if I'm looking to blow it up for some reason, right? that's when those higher megapixels might matter. Right. But the stuff that's coming into your, your phone through the app or your computer through the app, it won't matter because they're all compressed anyway. Exactly. Okay. Photo burst. What's that and why is it important? Um, you've got a one to 10 shot photo burst on, on that camera. You can, but either way you can run it on a 10 shot burst and it's going to take 10 pictures, write them to your SD card, but it's only going to send you the first shot. Okay. All right. Um, shutter speed, normal or fast. What does that do? Um, most of the time I leave mine on normal. Um, the longer you leave it open, the more light that's coming in, which is, is better. It's a little bit of a hard situation to explain how that actually works. Um, but the longer it's open, the more light that's let in. Well, the more light that's let in is the better a, a better picture you're going to get. But if there's motion moving, then it's going to it's a chance to have it make it blurrier. Right, right. And this with more light. This goes in. back to like photography school stuff. Exactly. Right? It's, it, 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 you explained it exactly right. The more, more the shutter speed, the faster shutter speed will capture a moving image and make it still. But a, a more normal shutter speed or a slow shutter speed, if that object is in motion, will appear blurry. Yes. That's pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, burst speed. That's going to be on your um, multiple shot bursts. So if you have it on fast, it's going to take him. I forget. Honestly, I'd have to go back and look. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head what that speed is. But if you have it in fast, it's just basically going to go boom, 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 boom every time it's trying to take a picture. Okay. For your your 
um, burst. Okay. Where if you have it in slow or normal, it's going to be a, just a little bit slower instead of just really quick. That's okay. the only difference All there. Right. So if a deer is walking, you might get a chain, you know, if it's fast, it, it may appear like it's just standing still because it looks like it never moved. But if, right. if it's slow, you might actually get a foot, you know, a, a leg moving forward a little bit. Right. Okay. Video size. So this, this would apply to the, if you chose video, you've got WVGA 720p or 1080p. What do those mean? So on the 3G cameras, it it's able to take the videos, but it's not going to send them. On the LTE models, it is able to send up to a five-second video. So okay. even if you have it on a, a 30-second video on the camera, it will take and write that 30 seconds to the car, but it's only going to send you the five-second video. Okay. And it's going to send it in WVGA, which means it's a lower resolution video. Um, but that's where, once again, where you're able to receive videos and not cost you something that's, you know, something ridiculous. Gotcha. Okay. Um, video length, that's kind of self-explanatory. You can tell how long you want the video to last. Trigger mode, you got PIR. We talked about PIR a little bit earlier, time lapse or both. Can you explain how each of those work again, PIR versus time lapse? And then how do you use both of them at the same time? Both, you would basically just set it up um, how you would on your PIR. Say if you wanted a one-shot burst every 45 seconds for once something triggered it. And then the the um where you could do both as well, where you're doing the time lapse would be if you want it to make sure it's still taking a picture every day. So you're, you're putting it up for security and you don't, you're not necessarily going to be getting activity there every day, but you have it set to take a one, one picture every 24 hours, basically. So you just get a picture every day to make sure your batteries are still um, up and, and everything's still working correctly. Okay. Sensitivity. You've got low, normal and high. I've always wondered about this. What, why do I care about sensitivity? Um, sensitivity for, for where we're at, which is in Kentucky, usually run it normal year round. Um, but when it gets, if, if you're getting too many pictures, say you're, you're like down South where it's really, really hot in Texas and you've got, it's cause the cameras are work off heat and motion. Um, if you're getting way too many pictures, I recommend it to move it to low because that's going to make it where it's not picking up as much on the heat side of it. Okay. Um, if you're not, if you think that you're missing pictures because of it's because it is too hot, most of the time you're going to get more. I know it's kind of, it's kind of another one of those things that's hard to explain. Um, but some people think they're missed pictures when it gets really hot like that. And that's where you would put it on high to make it more sensitive and to take more pictures. Okay. So in hot climates or warmer climates, a higher sensitivity setting might be better if you're getting too many yes. pictures. Whereas in colder climates, a, a, a low a low sensitivity. Okay. Gotcha. All right. That makes sense because it's picking up heat. So heat would, in a colder climate, would stick out more under, so you wouldn't need as much sensitivity to determine that. Did I say that right? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, trigger interval seems like, uh, I think that makes sense. So, how, so trigger interval and trigger interval unit determines how fast the next picture's coming. Yes. So you can set it to all kinds of things. And I have like, uh, 60 minutes or, or longer and down to seconds. Depends on how, how you want to run that. How many pictures do you want? Um, looking at, uh, what, what is work time? Work time is something I didn't quite understand. Work time is basically if you only want that camera to work certain hours of the day. So if you only want it to take pictures from six o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock in the morning, and then again at eight o'clock at night to 10 o'clock at night, you could set it where it only takes pictures and sends them to you during that time of day. Okay. All right. Overwrite. That's the we, we talked about overwrite where if the card's full, it'll just run it over. Uh, use timestamp. That's just telling you that you want, or just tells the camera that you want the time that the picture was taken on the picture itself. Is that accurate? Yes. At the very bottom of your pictures, you've always got your covert logo and all that information, your info bar. If you choose to, if you choose no there that you don't want that, then that won't be on the bottom of your pictures. Okay. Flash power, low or high. What's the difference? Why would I care? Um, I most of the time run mine on high, but every once in a while, if I'm where I've put the camera, if, the animals are walking by pretty close. Mm -hmm. It can wash out that, that animal. Okay. All right. 
maximum number of images per day. Mine's so currently for, set like, to unlimited. Where you have yours set to a thousand pictures. Yep. So that would be what thirty pictures a day okay. for a month. Yep. So you could set it to where it only sends you thirty pictures a day, so you don't go over that thousand pictures. Gotcha. Okay, so you can tell it how many, not only how in your plan how many you get per month, but you can tell it how many pictures to send per day, and it it, it could chew up those thirty pictures quickly if you're not careful. So yes. no, it, it, maybe a flock of turkeys come in, they chew up all thirty pictures in the first hour. Then you're done for the day if that setting is not on unlimited. But then you got to kind of watch your your monthly plan too. Right. Okay. Remote control. What is this? That's what we were talking about a few minutes ago where um, the remote control, you have the option to have it set to real time, half hour, one hour, all the way up to 24 hour delay. Um, if you leave it in real time, that means it's basically like talking on your cell phone. So the batteries are going to are going to run down quicker. Where if I have it in a 24 hour delay, that would be like my, t- my phone's turned on, but I'm not talking on it. I'm not texting on it. So my battery life is going to last longer. So if I, it's the, no, it doesn't matter what setting I put that on the pictures, every time a camera, the camera takes a picture, it's going to send the picture directly to the app. Okay. The only thing that it's affecting is if I make a change on that app. So if I make a change from the interval from one minute to five minutes or anything like that, or I request a real-time picture. It could take, if, I, if I'm if i running mine into 24-hour delay, it could take up to 24 hours before it takes that setting change. It's interesting to see that, because I was wondering how long it took for that setting to change. And it, do does it take all the settings in a 24-hour time frame or up to to make that change, or is it, are some of them instant? No, it would be every any of those settings changes that you make on the app. So if you're going to make changes, you would want to make them all at one time. Okay. So if you're going to make, if you say, uh, okay, I want to change it from, I want to make sure it's taking a three shot burst now. I want it to do every, every one minute, anything that you want to change, change it all at once before you hit save. So it takes all those changes at one time. Okay. And what happens if you don't? Um, It's only going to take the last setting change that you sent. All right. And it, those setting changes can take 24 hours to if you If you have it set to a 24 hour delay. Yes. Gotcha. All right. But with that being said, your your battery life is significant on on running it in real time. When I done the test on the three G camera last, I got about nine days of battery life on running it in real time, and that was on a food source, so it was over over a corn pile. Okay. And then um, I changed it to a twenty four hour delay, and I got almost three months of battery life. Really? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's significant. Wow. Okay. All right. That's quite, that's quite a change. So speaking of battery life, battery life, this is one of the questions I've been getting is like, well, how are the batteries on these things? What, what are you getting for feedback? I mean, you explain that settings mean a lot. Um, yes. but what, what should I tell people when they say how long, how long do the batteries last than these cell cameras? I get like, I get that question a lot. And the, and the main thing I tell them is basically exactly what I just told you. Depends on how you want to set it up. If you want to set it up where you can make changes all the time and you can request real time pictures, and you're then I highly suggest putting it somewhere you can put a solar panel um, and run that camera where it continues on. Where if you're putting it out in in thick timber and you're not going to get much sunlight, then I'm going to highly re- recommend for, um, using it on a delay. Um, say at least a four hour delay. That's going to increase your battery life as well. Uh, probably around two months instead of three with a, with a four hour delay, but you still have the option to make those changes. Okay. So that's that's how I would explain that. Now, when I have just the, you, uh, a regular covert camera, it seems like the batteries last forever. I think I've got some cameras, and granted, it's not necessarily on a food plot, but they'll last all year in in yes. the coldest of cold and still take pictures. How how have you developed that technology? Over the years, is it, is it something special? Because I've got other cameras that will just chew up batteries quickly, and the settings um, it, are similar. It's just how it's. There's several things on the board of the camera that can impact your battery life, and we've continued to work on trying to make sure we we have extended battery life because that's a big thing. It is. It's a huge thing. I mean, I don't want to be changing the batteries all the time. That's the last thing I want. I don't want to. Be, I want to stay away as much as I can until I need to go check. Yes. Yep. Okay. So. The other thing that has come up is that, and you, you, this may be proprietary information that you cannot leak, but I've had people ask me and they say, look, I don't know what wavelength these, the, the, the light flashes are at or what, or if it's a, a speed of the, the flash, 
but the deer on my covert camera don't seem to know or care that that camera's there. But on my other cameras, it looks like they're staring at headlights. But for some reason, the covert doesn't spook them. Is there any, has there been some technology development on your side to kind of fix that? And then I don't, I don't know if it's just a, a subjective situation where it's just an opinion or if there's actually something to that. Honestly, I, I'm, I think it's more of an opinion on what most people have there. Okay. But I think the biggest thing is, isn't the lights. Um, it's a lot of the cameras still make a noise um, when it's going to take a picture. And, and we've seen it, we've tested it. And it does, if, especially on the older models where you're actually, the, the filter is actually moving when it goes from daylight to dark, which is basically prime time for deer movement. Yeah, it does still make that noise on, on lots of, lots of cameras. Okay. So we've tried to, to make it where it doesn't have as much noise on our cameras. And that to me, it would be my opinion on it. So you think it's a noise thing, not a light thing. Okay. Yes. Are there other accessories that we should consider buying with some of these cameras for long-term use? I know you mentioned something about a solar panel. Um, and how many batteries are we looking at when, if I counted correctly, there are more batteries, double A batteries, which is great because AA are very accessible that are used in the, the uh, cell cam than a regular covert camera, for example. Um, but it also seems to last a decent amount of time. Can you talk about the, the, ty- the number of batteries and accessories that we may want to look at? Yes, it's, it's running off 12 AA batteries. Um, but if you, if you lose a battery on the way in or something, it will run off four or eight. Just not, it just won't last as long. Um, yes, I highly recommend solar panels. If you're putting it out where it, that solar panel can get plenty of sun, we, we also sell the rechargeable double A's and we also have a, um, a 6.4 volt rechargeable battery that will actually fit in the back of the solar panel. Um, if you're going to put it out and you don't want to have to touch it, the, both of those running it with either just the double A's or if you want to make sure you don't have to go back and you're getting a lot of pictures over a corn pile or, or whatever there you can run that 6.4 volt battery with it and it will last about triple the amount of time okay. on with using both. And it would just the regular double uh, a rechargeables. Gotcha. And what about the antennas? Are the, the antennas that come with the unit pretty much all you need or are there other tenors, antennas that you should get? We do have a booster antenna and it does work. Um, it, we have a lot of people say, well, I'm not seeing a whole lot of bars picking up with an, with the booster um the booster you're not really going to see a lot of extra bars on the camera um it, what it does it, it kind of grabs a consistent signal and holds it instead of just constantly fluctuating gotcha okay um now the 2018 models come out early 2018 right and they've been yes. out since what april ish yeah somewhere do, around that, that time do the new versions come out around that time frame every year Yes, um, we're hoping to have the 19s um, by February, but okay. it, it probably will be the, the Marches area again. Okay. And as far as like, and I'm looking on your website, you can, yes, you can buy these things on your website, right? But you can also yes. buy them at dealers. The entry point to get price point to get into this year's model is in the $400 range, right? Yes. And do you ever offer any coupons or anything like you ever sales during the year at all? We don't, um, on our website as for main reason, we don't want to undercut our dealers. Um, I know the dealers will probably cut a deal, especially this time of year. Everybody's trying to get through their inventory that they have left. Um, but for us, no, sir, we don't. Okay. Um, I'm looking on the site right now and it does show that the 2018 black Hawk LTE and the 2018 code black Retail for four four hundred thirty nine ninety nine. That was this year's model. Now they're on sale yes, right now for three hundred bucks. Is that correct? There, so there is some that don't have packaging or has damaged packaging or something to that extent. That's what that's what that is. Okay, so where it says four thirty nine ninety nine, marked down to three hundred, and I click on it, it says sale. Um, if I read more, okay, it says category sale, slightly damaged packaging, no packaging, closeouts refurbished. Gotcha. Yes. All right. So, and it's out of stock, so it's popular. So it, it sounds like there, are, if you don't mind not getting the, the, you know, the beautifully packaged product, right. You know, unopened, 
that there may be some deals here that you could get on the latest models at some point. Every once in a while, it's, we just we update it once we have it in stock. We we normally don't have very many. Okay. But we do have it every once in a while. Okay. Now the other thing that I think is interesting is that let's say you don't want to get into the four hundred dollar range and there's nothing available under the sale price for this year's model. You still have previous year's models that are for sale. 2017, yes. 2016, you still have some that are sell based that are still pretty darn good, right? Um, yes. Um, the only difference is they, that they're three G models versus the LTEs. Right. So what's like we talked about earlier, the three Gs will be going away in the next few years. Okay. So it's it's a cheaper entry point, but the longevity is not going to be there. Right. But I can also say um, you might want to check out what we've got for 2019 as well. So okay. we've, we've got, got a few things up our sleeve. Okay. So now you brought it up. Let's, let's talk about 2019. Um, what, what, do you, what, what can you tell us about 2019 right now? I know it's early, and but I don't know. Maybe there's some, some things that people want to start thinking about. Um, we, we talked about, you know, theft earlier about it has GPS coordinates and such. Well, our 2019 will have GPS um, antennas on the camera itself, so it will be a more specific location. Um, so that's a big for us for eight, for 19. And and we also will have a couple of new cameras coming out. We haven't talked much about them yet. We haven't released it yet, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to say much on that. Okay. All right. But good things to come in 2019 yes. that are exciting. Absolutely. Okay. Now, and this is one of my my last questions here, and we'll wrap this up. As far as security of these cameras, what's available for like bear safe and just just people safe? I mean, what what can we put on these cameras to keep people from stealing them? We do offer the bear slash security safe, um, which is a metal box that the camera will sit into. You can lag bolt it to the tree, and we also sell a um, a python cable that will go through the metal box and the camera itself. But if you don't want to put the metal box up, it will f- go right through the back of the, of the camera as well. Okay. All right. Uh, what are some of the questions you get from consumers that you, you kind of have to answer a lot? Is there anything else that pops up that we haven't covered? I feel like we've covered most of it. Okay. Um, the main questions are how to set them up. You don't have to, you know, go to your AT&T or Verizon store. Everything's done directly on the website. That's usually the bit most, most asked question. Okay. All right. So you got your portal, you got your apps, you got to set up your billing page, and you have to decide whether you're going to get an AT&T or a Verizon cell camera. And then once you have that, you have to set up your billing site through secure.covert-wireless.com. Then that'll activate the camera itself, and you can go into your covert-wireless.com, and that's where you'll be able to access that particular camera see all the photos that are being uploaded to it if it's on and set up somewhere. And then you can manipulate the settings from in there through this portal, whether it's your computer or your phone, and and see the pictures that are coming in. And then you can always go to the SD card at some point. But the nice thing is that with these cell cameras, you don't have to go to the camera. The, the stuff, All the information is coming real time to you. You can go retrieve those SD cards when they're full. And it does tell you, right? It tells you when the SD card is full. Yeah, it will tell you in your info tab of how much space is left on that SD card right. and what size SD card you have in there. Yep. Yep. So you, you're aware when it gets full, and if it's not going to overwrite, what happens if it if overwrite's not clicked and it gets full? Will it stop taking pictures? Yes, it will. Okay. And as far as the battery, I've noticed that for some reason, maybe it's just my camera, but the it always says a hundred percent battery life on the information tab but if you look at the camera picture itself it'll show the you it looks like a, an accurate depiction of what the battery life is doing um if yours is still showing 100 percent, it very well could need a firmware update on the camera okay um we've had a couple um firmware updates on on pretty much every model we had just found some things that we wanted to improve okay um but the most accurate you're going to get um on on battery life is on the on the picture itself Okay. Down in the bottom right corner of that picture, if it says, has the battery, little, it's like a little battery and it might have yeah. two bars. Right, right. But it, right beside it, it has a number. So anywhere from one to, to 10, and a 10 obviously being the highest, will be in 100%, 90%, 80%. 
and all the way down. Usually once it gets to about 30%, it'll stop sending you the pictures, but it will continue to write pictures to that SD card. Okay. So there's a chance that the battery life, um, if the firmware hasn't been updated for your camera, that you might be getting two different um, pieces yes. of information. One may not be accurate. The one on, so, so far from what I've seen, the one that's in the picture itself seems to be more accurate because the other one doesn't never changes. So it sounds like a firmware update. So speaking of firmware updates, how do you do that? They're super easy now on the cameras that use for the app um, or use the app. Basically, once you get to the camera, you just turn the camera to the setup mode and let it pick up its signal. And then depending on which model you have, basically you will go and find where it says FW update and press OK. Let it go through the steps, whether it's on the older models, it's a one through nine or one through 11 steps. Let it do that. Turn the camera off. Ready to go. And basically turn it back to setup and let it pick up signal again and it's ready to go. So on the new cameras, um, yeah, you don't have to take the SD card out. You don't have to lock it. You don't have to do any of that anymore. Wow. Um, and then on the new ones, it's literally in the first tab. So as soon as you turn it to the setup mode, let it pick up signal. Hit your menu button. Scroll down. FW update. Press OK. And it tells you. 50%, 80%, 100% done. And then turn it off, turn it back to set up, you're ready to go. So it, it, it it's almost automatic. Like you don't even have to bring an SD card out that you don't have to like download to a computer or from a computer to an SD card, bring it to the camera, plug it back in. None of that. No, it does it directly from the network now. That's cool. That's That saves you a lot of headache for Absolutely. Us, us non-techies. Gotcha. All right, very good. Well, I think that, that kind of covers everything I wanted to cover regarding the cell camera, um, wh- where do you see the cell camera industry, not mes- necessarily just your camera, where, where does the cell camera thing go um, in the future? What What's in it for the hunter? What, does it expand and we get say goodbye to the old cameras and everybody goes cell? What do you see? I don't think we'll ever completely go away from the just your traditional trail cameras just for the because the price points and then also you know there's certain places that do not get cell signal um so i don't think they'll go away completely but from what we've seen the last few years it's just continued to grow okay on the wireless side gotcha very good let me uh run through my 10 rapid fire questions these are just to get to know you a little bit better um and let me know when you're ready all right okay what's your number one hunting tip of all time Number one hunting tip, um, the biggest thing for me would be um, the use of trail cameras on how it's impacted the hunting and how to set them up and, and such like that. That's to me, has made it where I'm able to hunt and actually go in and not waste a lot of time hunting one specific animal. Gotcha. We have these things that we like to hunt with. Usually it's some kind of device. Maybe it's a good luck charm or something of that nature, and it drives us crazy if we don't have it with us. What's that one thing for you? You know, I don't have anything like that. All right. Some people don't. It's interesting. What's your biggest pet peeve in life? Biggest pet peeve having to repeat myself. All right. I like that (laughs) one. Yes. I understand that one. How old are you today? I am 31. 31. What would you tell the 16-year-old Kimber Odell knowing what you know today about life? Um, you know, I don't know what I would, basically, uh. Probably don't just be a little smarter. <laughs> <laughs> be a little smarter. <laughs> don't be a teenager. That's funny. Um, that's a good one, though. I think that a lot of most of us would tell our younger self to be a little smarter. Um, you're at a, a hunting convention somewhere in the world, and a stranger comes up to you and they ask you what you do for a living. What do you tell them? Tell them I um, if they ask if it's a stranger, I would probably just say I'm uh, um, I'm in sales. Okay, gotcha. What did you have for breakfast this morning? I had a protein bar. Very nice. Very healthy. You get your own billboard on the side of the highway. It's a blank canvas. You can put anything you want on it. What would it? What would you put on it? What would it say? Oh, Lord. I, would, I honestly have no idea. And I'm not very artistic. <laughs> <laughs> What's a typical day in your life look like? Pretty much work. Um, get up, go to work, come home. A lot of times I have to go back to the other job where I'm at and then come back. And since we've got a new house, working on the new house. So pretty yeah. much work all day. Work. As long as I've known you, you have always been working. Like it's, That's, I've never seen you just kind of chill and do no work at all. It's uh, you are hard work. I'll give you that. It's crazy. <laughs> um, if I say the word successful to you, who's the first person that pops in your head and why? Successful? Hmm. You know, I, I I don't know the answer to that. Who I would think 
uh, maybe Joey, Joey. Uh, maybe my boss, I would assume. Okay. Uh, All right. I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes it pops in. Sometimes it doesn't. I, I mean, I, I don't think everybody has a, that answer on the top of their head. Sometimes it's there. And then finally, what's a deer hunting day in your life look like? Maybe this is the one time you get to relax is actually when you go deer hunting. It is. And that's, that's why like the last couple of years I've had a, a trip, um, with a couple of buddies and we go to Kansas every year and that's, I actually still get to relax. I still work cause I still have my cell phone and all that good stuff, but I actually get to not worry about it and I, and I go sit in the stand and, and I'm, I'm get to hunt. That's it. Uh, that to me is just the best time because I don't have to worry about work as much. That's your bliss moment. Got it. Yes. Very good. Well, excellent. This has been quite an education in game camera cell technology, and I appreciate you taking the time. If we have more questions or if if we've created more questions than answers as we've gone through all this stuff, where can people reach out to you or Covert if they have more questions? Um, they can send us emails um, to support at dlccovert.com. Um, we also have a chat option, and then um, they can also call us. Um, 877-462-1799. Very cool. Excellent. I look forward to 2019 and seeing you at some of these conventions and, and seeing what you bring to the table. Cause it's always exciting. You always have something new and different and, uh, we'll, uh, uncover that stone down the road. I think that's excellent. And uh, I appreciate yes, you. I appreciate you coming on. It's been an honor and a pleasure and, and talking to you for quite a while. It's, I've learned a lot. Thank you guys for inviting me on. Thanks to Kimber O'Dell from Covert Scouting Cameras for coming on the show and discussing all the aspects of the cellular game camera. It's certainly something that a lot of hunters are starting to use. I feel like it's just kind of getting going, even though it's been around for a few years. But in my opinion, it looks like that technology will continue to advance and it will probably be the method of choice at some point, simply because of your lack of need to go into the woods frequently. You can just get it. Uh, through the app or, or via your phone all the time. So it's just an advancement in technology. It probably helps your hunting area so that you don't have to go in and out of it as much. So it's, I can see some distinct advantages. And as time gets shorter and shorter in our lives, uh, it, cer- it certainly cuts down on some of the, the, the need to go into the field as often. Not that I don't love being in the field, but there are those moments when Life just takes over and you just don't have the time. So I can see how this is a uh, improvement in your, your quality of life uh, and probably your deer hunting life too. Uh, Dusty, do we have a Chubby Tines Tip of the Week? Yeah, it's something that... The Chubby Tines Tip of the Week is sponsored by Morse's Sporting Goods. Firearms, use firearms, bows, use bows. Located at 85 Kentucky Falls Road in Hillsborough, New Hampshire. Give Jim a call at 603-464-3444, morsessportinggoods.com. Your dollars go further in New Hampshire. There's no sales tax. Morse's Sporting Goods. Learned at uh, quite a younger age, and it, it's something that I always try to pass along. And, and I'm hoping out there that somebody that don't have the knowledge of this, but a buck deer will drag their feet in the snow. Mm. Yes, that is true. One of those things to separate your tracking abilities, um, I've seen it firsthand. And it's a, it's a good clue, and it works. Um, I've, I've tracked a buck because of that exact situation, because of that exact pattern in the snow. Um, I could tell it was a buck and ended up almost getting that shot. And that was the, that one shot that my gun scope fogged up, and I couldn't get a shot before he ran off. And that was a good buck, too. But it works. It works. Very nice. Dusty, where can we find you when you're not hanging out here in the studios with me? Uh, shoot me an email, dusty at bigbuckregistry.com. You can look me up on Instagram and Twitter at Chasing Antler, facebook.com forward slash chubby tines outdoors. Jay, where can the people reach out to you when you're not on the mic? Likewise, you can shoot me an email, jay at bigbuckregistry.com, and you can visit us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash bigbuckregistry. We're also on Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash bigbuckregistry. We are also on Instagram, instagram.com forward slash bigbuckregistry, and YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash bigbuckregistry. On YouTube, you can listen to all of our podcasts in their entirety. As far as videos are concerned, it's a boring video, but the audio content is there, so you can actually listen to our podcast. You can also listen to all of our live shows that we've done on Thursday nights when we do do them, and we've gone back and interviewed 
re-interviewed a lot of our previous guests we had on the show just to put a face to a voice. Let's put it that way. You can always listen to our show on other places as well, not just YouTube. We're found on Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, and as an Amazon Alexa skill. Go to Alexa and say, Alexa, enable Big Buck Registry. And if you would like to submit a buck to our page for consideration and be featured on our page in front of 250,000 diehard deer hunting fans, all you have to do is go to bigbuckregistry.com forward slash my buck and all of the instructions will be right there. I think that's pretty much everywhere we're at. I think that's a wrap, Dusty. That's a whole lot of big buck, Jay. Sure is. I'm Jay Scott. I'm Dusty Phillips. And this is the Big Buck Registry's Deer Hunting Podcast. We'll see you next week. (laughs) 